Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is the first lecture of the day. Uh, it's my honor to uh, in, uh, introduce uh, Dr. Si Feng Wu from the MD Anderson Cancer Center. She, was the, she is the uh, department chair and also the professor in the Department of Epidemiology and the Cancer Prevention and Population Science at the MD Anderson Cancer Center. And she also the director of the Center of the Translational and Public Health Genomics at the MD Anderson Cancer. Her interest is in three topics, the genetic basis on, of cancer and interaction of, to the environment, diet, and physical activity an integrative risk reduction model on ca of cancer development programs and treatment response, and also the pre-malignant lesions, risk and progression to cancer. Uh, there will be two lectures from uh, uh, Dr. Wu. The first one will be pre-malignant genome atlas of colorectal adenoma, and the second one will be the personalized risk prediction model for the uh, gastrointestinal malignancies and a tool for advanced precision medicine. Professor Wu, please. Thank you. It's a really a great honor to be here, and thank you for your invitation. So today I'm going to share with you a program on premium genome atlas of colorectal adenoma. Cancer is developed over the accumulation of the genetic and epigenetic changes for over many years, and cancer is often diagnosed at advanced stage, and then with the chemotherapy and the radiotherapy, the results are disappointing. Therefore, the better strategy is to identify the cancer when it de develops at the earliest stage, and then this will allow us to give us the opportunity to stop the cancer early and also to even reverse the, de the detectable process. So most epithelial cancers are preceded by pregnant lesions, and especially for colorectal cancer. So for a few years ago at MD Anderson, we have built a premium genome atlas program, and that is in collaboration with Dr. Strawling and also Dr. Raju. So the goal of this program is to assess the spectrum of risk factors contributing the progression from healthy individuals to pre-cancer to cancer patients, and also to determine the molecule differences among these patients. And we hope to identify the high-risk individuals and also to identify the druggable targets for preventive intervention and also to predict the response for this prevention intervention. So there are three components in the premium genome atlas program the, in the infrastructure. And one is the biobank, another is the cohort of patients with pre-cancer, and then the third one is the molecule technology platform. <clears throat> we hope to use this molecule technology platform to separate patients with pre-cancer from normal individuals and uh, the cancer patients, and then to predict which patients with pre-cancer will develop uh, malignancy. And then all we have used the two study design, and one is the cross-sectional study design compared to the normal pre-cancer to cancer. That's a quick way to look at the molecular differences. And also we are using a prospective study design to follow up the patients with pre-cancer and to see which patients will develop a cancer develop pre-cancer and also when they will develop a cancer. So in this program, we have focused on three cancer sites, and one is the colorectal adenoma, which is a pre-cancer for colorectal cancer, and we have also worked on the oral pregnant lesions, which is a pre-cancer for oral cancer, and also the Barrett's esophagus, which is a pre-cancer for esophagus cancer. So today I will focus on uh, colorectal adenoma 
a precancer for colorectal cancer. So in the screening colonoscopy, about 30 to 50 percent of cancers, I'm sorry, 50 to 30, uh, 30 to 50 percent of the population have the adenoma in the colon. And currently, the good standard for colorectal cancer diagnosis and preventive measure is the colonoscopy. And however, not only there is a financial burden by the colonoscopy, but also a source of complications and discomfort to patients. And it has been estimated that the largest cost to the healthcare system generated by colonoscopy is related to the future surveillance when a patient was detected has the abnormal lesions. Therefore, we need a better risk classification and utilize molecule classification to identify which adenomal patients are at increased risk. So this is a clinical important questions. So for our correct adenoma preliminary genome atlas program, so far we have recruited over 3,141 cases and also collected over 750 adenoma tissues. And we have also built an Oracle web-based database, and this is a screenshot of the, the database, and this is for the family history and also for the body image data uh, collection. And this web-based portal can help to not only reduce the cost for collection of this data, but also make uh, the query of the data and the downstream analysis much easier. And also because of this web-based approach, we are able to expand this program to other clinical sites. So here are a list of the research highlights from this program, and we have completed a somatic mutation profiling of colorectal adenoma using the next generation sequencing, and also identify some promising driving uh, mutation genes for, uh, for colorectal cancer. And we have also completed a pilot program to look at the gut microbiome, diet, and the colorectal cancer. And we have demonstrated the feasibility of home and the male-based fecal sample collection. And then we have also utilized the metabolic profile and the microRNA profile identify as some promising bi biomarkers, and also we have looked at the obesity. And uh, later, I will show some of these research highlights in uh, more detail. And in terms of technology uh, platform, uh, now we have equipment, e equipped with the facility to do the detailed the genotype analysis, not only the candidate genes, but also the GWAS and now next generation sequencing. And we have also developed a panel of phenotypic assays to look at the telomere dysfunction DNA capacity and it's also the cell cycle, cell, cell cycle analysis. And also we have developed the, all the uh, omic analysis. And recently, we have generated, the, created the next generation sequencing bioinformatic analysis pipelines, and also the leveraged one of the advanced technology to do the profiling, the gene expression. And not only use this technology, we also look at RNA-seq and also the nanostream. And this is one of the advanced technology we have recently utilized in the pre-cancer program. And this technology is especially good for pre-cancer because this technology utilizes next generation sequencing. So the result is quite accurate. And also it uses a very small volume of plasma. And it only requires 15 microliter of plasma for the profiling. And also it can be applied in the peripheral sections. And also it can be utilized as high throughput analysis. So next, I will share with you a project 
on the somatic mutation profiling of the colon adenoma, and this is part of our colorectal cancer moonshot program. And this is, again, this is in close collaboration with Dr. Rajel, Dr. Strolling, and many others, many others. So in the uh, moonshot program, we have uh, planned to look at the mutations and the gene expression and also the small RNA expression. And so far, we have completed the mutation analysis using the next generation sequencing technology. And this is our study design. We use the core exome sequencing and as well as the target gene sequencing. And totally, we have uh, uh, sequencing the 49 pairs of adenoma tissues and also their uh, lymphocytes and it's for the whole exome sequencing. And then 100 pairs of the adenoma tissues and the, the lymphocytes for the target gene sequencing. So basically, after DNA preparation, we capture the genes and with the to capture the genes for the whole exomes and the targeted sequencing and then prepare the, the DNA for the sequencing analysis. And meanwhile, we also download the next gen sequencing data from the TCGA for 460 pairs correct cancer tumor tissues and then perform a variety of bioinformatics analysis. And then we compared the mutations, the frequency and the types of mutations between the adenoma and the colorectal cancer and identified the potential driver genes and then we use a specific statistical tool to identify the top candidate genes that could be most important for the progression and to predict the progression. So the study population and totally we have included 149 subjects and for the whole exome sequencing, we have studied the 35 conventional adenoma patients and the 14 cecil serrated adenoma patients. And the target gene sequencing are all focused on 100 pairs of the conventional adenomas. And for the target gene sequencing, we have focused on the create a panel of 767 genes, and the source of the genes are from here, and so we have identified the significant mutated genes and also the copy number variation regions from the TCGA data. And then we also identified the potential driver uh, genes and from the cosmic database, and also we added more genes from the literature review. And this is a series of the biomarker, uh, bioinformatic pipelines we have utilized for this analysis. And what we found is that the frequency of the somatic mutations and is significantly low in adenoma uh, uh, tissues, than the colorectal cancer tissues. And uh, so here is the correct cancer tumor tissues, the, the mutations, and they belong to the hypermutators. Therefore, in our analysis, we have separated the correct cancer tumor tissues, like hypermutators and the non-hypermutators, because we believe that the hypermutated the correct cancer is correlated with the microsatellite instability and also the MLH1 expression. And uh, these hypermutators, the mutations, are mostly caused by defective DNA repair capacity. Therefore, these mutations might not have the functional differences. So we found that all the mutation rate in the adenomas is significantly lower in the uh, mutations in the correct cancer tumor tissues. And then we found that the mutation rate in the uh, subtype of the adenoma are not different. Then we use the 2020 rule to identify the potential drivers. And so this 2020 rule was proposed do by Dr. Vogestin, and it, it was, it's a paper published in Science in 2013. So what he proposed is that the if the mutations are missense mutations, and also using the 
20, 20 rules. So that is, uh, if the mutations, the 20 percent of the mutations are missense mutation, and then this could be a potential gene as an uncle gene. And if the mutations, like 20 percent of mutations, are non untrunked mutation, so that is the mutation uh, miss belong to the missense and frame shift and across the whole proteins, and then these genes are classified as potential tumor suppressor genes. And in our next generation sequencing analysis, we have a, you, for the uh, whole exome sequencing analysis, we have identified these genes as a potential driver mutate genes for the, for the corrector, for, for the conventional adenoma. And among all these genes, the APC is belong to tumor suppressor genes, and then the, all the other genes are belong to the uncle genes. And then we further use the false discovery rate to do the multiple comparison adjustment, and here the first, the top five are significant. And for the CCO serrated adenoma, we identify these two genes. And you can see for the different types of adenoma, and they have the some of the shared genes, and so these genes, the KRTAP4, this gene is shared between the conventional adenoma and the sessile serrated uh, uh, tissues. And however, the other genes are not sh uh, shared, and these are very unique genes, and for the conventional adenoma, and then BRF is a very unique for the Cecil serrated adenoma. And also we noted that the APC genes, and it's only present in the conventional adenoma tissue, but not in the Cecil serrated adenoma. And then in the targeted uh, sequencing analysis combined with the whole exome sequencing analysis, we have identified three additional driver mutations. And the Keras mutation is a potential uncle, is an uncle gene, and then these two genes are the potential tumor suppressor genes. And then after that, uh, we identified the potential driver genes, and then we use uh, another uh, statistical tool. It's called the it, it caused, called the random forest uh, methods. We use these methods to identify top genes that are most important for progression from pre-cancer to cancer. And then we use, here are some of the methods, and we use the most severe mutations, and here the mutations, and to represent each genes. And then analysis are supervised by the histology by like the conventional adenoma or the serrated adenoma, and then use the random forest methods to select the important genes. And what we found in comparison from non hypermutated colorectal uh, cancer and with the conventional adenoma, we found that 20 genes are most significant in, in terms of predicting the progression from the pre-cancer to cancer. And also we found this prediction model is quite uh, powerful and the prediction accuracy is about 94% and the error rate is 14%. And also interestingly, we found that the genes identified from the driver mutation, driver mutation and also from the forest, the random forest methods and the gene the mutations, their frequency is correlated with the disease aggressiveness or disease, disease uh, progression. And for example, here, except these genes, and this gene mutation is decreased as the disease progress, and all the other genes are increased as the disease, uh, uh, disease progress. And this is a summary of the findings from this next generation sequencing analysis. And we found that the, from the whole exome sequencing and that the, all adenomas were non hypermutators And also, although the somatic mutation frequencies were similar in conventional adenoma and in sessile serrated adenoma, but 
in terms of the mutated genes and the, they have shared common genes, they also have a distinct pattern of the gene, uh, the, 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 the distinct genes involved in the each uh, histological type. And interesting, we also found that the truncated mutation in APC genes is only present in the conventional adenoma, but not in sessile stellated adenoma. Therefore, this suggests that the sessile uh, sessile serrated adenoma may not be the origin of the hypermutation mutated colorectal cancer, and which was uh, proposed, suggested in the literature previously. And also, our target gene sequencing has confirmed the funding from our whole exome sequencing analysis and also identified additional three genes. And using the random forest methods, we have identified 20 genes, and it can classify the tissues from adenoma to cancer and with an accuracy of more than 94%. And also the genes with a consistent trend from non-advanced adenoma to advanced adenoma to colorectal cancer could reflect the progress towards the malignancy and this could be the candidate genes for the functional analysis. So in summary, and uh, in terms of clinical uh, applications or future applications, and our study have provided the novel insight into the potential driver genes uh, in terms of progression for chronic cancer from pre-cancer to cancer. And also, we have identified a panel of genes and with the mutation frequency is associated with the disease progression. And these mutations could serve as a molecular clock and which indicates how far an adenoma has gone towards tumor genesis. And so this analysis can help a better understanding for the underlying biology, risk stratification, and also design of the prevention uh, trials. So next, I will just briefly to sh also to share with you another analysis. And we looked at the metabolomic profiling in colorectal cancer. And so we try to identify whether metabolites can be utilized as an early detection biomarker. This is our study design, and we use the discovery phase and the validation phase. And in each phase, we include the three groups, and they include the cancer group, pre-cancer group, and also the control group. And in the discovery phase, we include the 30 subjects for each group. And then in the validation phase, we include the 50 subjects in each uh, group. And then from this analysis, we found the three metabolites are the uh, significant uh, correlate with the disease progression. For, for, for example, the level of sizing is decreased in adenoma patients and then further decreased in correct cancer patients. And also similar situation was found for hypo hypoxia thing. And so it's decreased. And however, the D minus level was increased for the uh, pre-cancer patients compared to the controls and also for uh, cancer patients. And this finding has been further validated. And we have also found a joint effects between the sizing and the three metabolites and the adenoma risk and the colon cancer risk has a joint effect with the BMI and also the smoking. And also we found that the ratios of the metabolites also have a joint effect with the smoking status in terms of adenoma risk and also the correct cancer risk. And there is a joint effect also with the BMI, the body mass index. And then using the metabolite set enrichment analysis, we found that the purine metabolism is the major pathways contributing to the progression from adenoma to cancer. And then the another highlight I want to briefly mention is we look at the obesity at the risk of adenoma and the colorectal cancer. And so 
It has been found that obesity is associated with the risk for adenoma and colorectal cancer. And however, most studies are all focused on the body mass index information at the study enrollment. And however, as you know, the current cancer development has a long latency. It has a latency of 20 to 30 years. Therefore, we want to see whether the obesity or overweight in early adulthood can contribute to the correct cancer tumor genesis. So what we found is here, the BMI at age 20 is associated with the adenoma risk and also correct cancer risk. And the BMI at, at age 40 and also associated with risk. And this is the BMI uh, at three years prior to the correct cancer diagnosis. And here you can see the risk at a younger age uh, is much stronger than the, uh, the risk of before the diagnosis. And we found, so our finding is that obesity at a younger age is a strong risk factor for adenoma and also for correct cancer. And here you can see a BMI at age 20 is increased and the adenoma risk is increased and also the correct cancer risk is also increased. And so from this study, we think that the BMI in early adulthood is associated with the increased risk for pre-cancer and also for the tumor, the, for the cancer. And therefore, this suggests that the body fitness is likely to contribute to both the development of the adenoma and the cancer, and also contribute to the progression. So our study suggests that the weight control, we might need to start the weight control in early age for the prevention of the colorectal cancer. So in summary, our roadmap for the pre genome atlas is first we try to identify the modifiable risk factors or molecule differences between the normal pre-cancer and the cancer. And then we perform the integrative analysis incorporate of the molecule changes and the clinical and epidemiology information, then identify the predictors for risk for progression and early detection, and then uh, apply it into the clinical trials, and then validate these findings and use these findings to uh, influence the policy making and public, public attitudes, and hopefully to shift the fighting of cancer from the treatment to prevention. And now I would like to thank my collaborators, and especially Dr. Raju and Dr. Strahling, and they're in the audience today, and also thank my team, and of course, also thank all the patients, and also thank you for listening. Thank you. Enjoy very much about your talk. Uh, uh, we have uh, some comment and question. Actually, we have the things called the Asian Pacific Risk Score for Colon Cancer that we develop among our group uh, in this region, Japan, Korea, Thailand, Hong Kong, and some of China. And we have found that uh, gender, sex, smoking, and family history are the main risks that we put as a score to do screening for those. And uh, we almost gonna put the BMI as one of it uh, because in the unique variant analysis, is was very significant, but unfortunately, when the you know whole the analysis came at uh, you know uh, you know monthly variant, it did not uh, got any good significant. But I think this is one thing that uh, we may change our you know score by adding a, a BMI as our you know the risk score. The other thing I I, I the regarding your you know the genome wide analysis, uh, one comment. Uh, uh, as an endoscopist, we usually uh, look the, at the morphology, like phenotype, SSAP or adenoma, as the, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, you know, recommendation for, in terms of the interval of uh, surveillance. Usually, the, this day, unlike in the U.S., that you, you guys do like every 10 years, we put five years. But for those with SSAP, we bring them back sooner. But I have seen from your lecture, some of adenoma have different genetic mutation. Uh, at the end uh, on your talk, uh, those different in terms of genetic reflect 
the different of the tumor progression level. But could you see it earlier? For among those adenoma, if they do have different you know, genetic variation, uh, can we predict that how soon could we bring those back if you have this certain type of genetic abnormalities? Principle is if the, uh, we find a driver mutations in this uh, in these tissues, and that then basically these tissues could be at high risk, and then these patients might be needed to be more do more frequent frequent uh, screening. But for patients, if the uh, uh, risk stratification and like uh, is that really at a lower risk, and maybe possible that the intervals may be much longer. Thank you. Because uh, for us, I think the, we look at only phenotype, but I think this is a good hope that genotype can guide us sooner and we can, you know, the, certify the recommendation for those patients. Last question. On your metabolome, uh, you know, uh, examination, uh, are, are those uh, specimens come from blood? Can you comment any different from volatile Asian? Because lately, I think the, the Cleveland group did the study on the you know, volatile Asian uh, for those with, I believe it's either Barrett or surgical cancer. What about colon cancer? Among different uh, you know, GI cancer, you think what should be the target of examinations? Blood or you know, volatile Asian or any other specimens? to the next oh, um, lecture and then if anybody oh, can oh, I have one sorry <laughs> um, thank you for the talk um, I'm just wondering with your results with the decreased level of hypoxanthine I'm sorry oh um, the results that you showed with the decreased level of hypoxanthine uh -huh. uh, yes um, do you know what's going on there is is there like about um, an intrinsic factor where there's actually a depletion of nucleic acids and then the intrinsic correction of the somatic mutations are... Yeah, it um, looks like because this is all in the pathway for the purine uh, metabolism pathway, but the exact me mechanism we still need to explore and to find out. Okay, thank you. That'd be interesting. Okay. Okay. Um, so we move to the next lecture. <coughs> the risk prediction model of the uh, gastrointestinal malignant.